Keep coming, Steph. Keep coming, Steph. She's ignoring me. Did you hear me? I told you to keep coming. <laughs> she's, she says she's all right. So. Well, welcome to worship this morning. Glad you join us for our time together as we share in worship. A couple of things to uh, share with you before we continue our time together this morning. Uh, today is Noisy Bucket Offering, so if you brought your change, uh, you can place it in the bucket in the back. Um, if you already did, thank you for doing that. Um, the flowers on the floor down there this morning are from the funeral of Roy Miller, which happened on Tuesday. Um, there is a sign-up sheet on the back desk in the narthex for greeters coming up for the next few weeks. Two weeks from today is Confirmation Sunday, and so hopefully you all join us for Confirmation Sunday. And uh, beginning next week, there'll be a table in the back with a place um, that you can place cards if you'd like to give a card um, to our four compromands. And our four compromands are gonna be worship leaders on that Sunday, aren't we, Maddie and Brooklyn? They're so excited about it, or, or not. But anyway, they're gonna, they're gonna do fine. So that's in two weeks. And then just a reminder, on Sunday, June 4th, our conference minister, David Long Higgins, will be here and he's gonna preach for us that Sunday, and so hopefully you'll join us on Sunday, June the 4th. So I think that's everything that I have to share with you this morning. Oh, maybe it's not. Come ahead. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you turn on the mic for Gina? They'll never, they'll never hear you. <laughs> Who's going to talk? Just your baby. Yes. What? <laughs> go ahead. Hold it up there. Hold it up. There you go. <laughs> I want to thank everybody that helped us with my uncle Roy Miller. He was like a father to us since our dad died 30 years ago. And Jim, he was amazing. Everybody come up to us telling us how you brought Roy to them that day. So 
want to thank everybody. I, I just can't thank you enough. You did so much. Thank you. So, Roy, Roy, you all, you heard me say that Roy and Bill and I were friends for a long time. Um, just because we went to the spot forever and a day. And I talked about that in the service, you know. I said, you know, it seemed like for that time we were there, an hour or whatever, it's one of those things that it's almost like time stops for a moment. And that, you know, that's how you do it. And so um, it, was, it was an honor for me to help celebrate his life. So thank you. Okay, will you join me in our peace, since I'll remember this week to do it. Peace be with you. Peace be in our midst. Peace be the light on our path. Peace be with you. We continue. It's our same opening video that we've shared the last few weeks, the work of Easter. We were not created to live stagnant lives, to be stuck, bound, or broken. We were created with a purpose, a calling, a mandate, a mission. Even in these uncertain times, that calling remains the same, to go into the world, to make disciples, to share the love of Jesus. This is the work of Easter. The greatness of God, the power of the resurrection in action. What Jesus did has changed us, made us a new creation, given us an unimaginable hope. Grace is taking root. Mercy has flooded our souls, and the promise of eternity has redefined our everything. So why keep all that to ourselves? It's time to put Easter in motion, to make a difference, to share Jesus with the world around us. If your life has been changed, it's time to get to work. And now Jim will play for us our prayer.
Good morning. Well, last week, if you were here, you remember that John gave a very descriptive um, <laughs> entrance of left and right. And I thought, well, Pastor Jim must have not thought that I could handle it. I don't know. But I decided to start this way this morning. I've traveled with you. I don't know if you know left or right. <laughs> there's Jimmy. that. There's that. Okay. <laughs> So there was a boy aged four, and he tells his dad, Dad, I decided to get married. And the dad says, wonderful. Do you have a girl in mind? And the boy said, yeah, Grandma. She said she loves me. I love her too. And she's the best cook and storyteller in the whole wide world. And dad said, well, that's nice, but we have a small problem here. And the boy said, what's the problem? And dad says, well, she happens to be my mother. How can you marry my mother? And the boy said, why not? You married mine? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, grandmothers out there. And if you're a lady and never given birth, you've mothered in ways beyond measure. So thank you and happy Mother's Day. Now if you'll join me in the call of worship. Live in God's love. Let that love be poured out for all of God's people. Bring hope and peace to all who you meet. We are all to be God's witnesses. Celebrate and rejoice. Praise be to God who has called, healed, and given us the ministry of peace. Amen. Our opening this morning is, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Life and breath. 
Reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide in us. We live because of you. We hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, in the spirit of truth, the rise in us. Amen. You can be seated. Our gathering song this morning is For the Beauty of the Earth. Now, 
Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you, and accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Maintain a good conscience so that when you are alone, those who abuse you for your good, conducting Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight wives, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. And the second reading this morning comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Now, I've been asked to um, have the children come up a little early we're going to have an impromptu rhythm band with the choir this morning as they sing, Sing the Lord's Goodness. So if the children will come forward a little early before children's message, they're going to help the choir this morning. And since I can't carry a tune in the bucket, I'm going to help you with the rhythm. How about that? Got some more coming, Trees. Come here. Come here. You want to make some music? Sure. And the rest of us will just clap with you, whatever. How about that? Uh -huh. I'm not sure that you want to make it. I'm not sure that you want to make it. Right where you're at, you have to watch the choir director, okay? I think most of us have something. If not a practice, just doing something here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
make sure that we have flowers to give to all the ladies in the church. And these are called dianthus. Is that the right pronunciation? Dianthus? Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of them there that we're going to give to all the ladies in the church. But think about this. Now, how did this start? What did somebody have to do? So they put dirt in this, right? Or something, and they had to plant a seed, right? And then what? Water. They had to water it. What else? They had to give it some sun, right? Katie, what are you going to say, honey? Right, right, yeah. So, water and sunlight. And what's the last thing you have to do, Gina? What? Soil, seed, water, nutrients, sun. And then what's... She thinks you're funny, Katie. What's the last thing you have to have when you plant a seed? Dustin, what's the last thing you have to have when you put your corn in the ground? What's the last thing you have to have? After, after the rain? Sun. Sun. Fertilizer. What else? Okay, love. But what are we missing? Elaine Pumphrey, what don't you have any of? Patience. What is that right, Elaine? Yeah, but Lady tells me all the time she has no patience. So you have to have patience, right? That because it takes a while. You put the seed in there, you water it, you give it sun, and then you just have to wait, right? And eventually it becomes this. Now when you take it home, what do you have to do? You can't leave it in this, right? You have to put it in like a little bit. You put something. You shouldn't put it in the ground or in a bigger pot because if, if, I'm not going to do this we have a mess and then Danielle be mad at me when she comes clean, but what do you think, if I pull this out, what do you think you would see? Dirt. Dirt and what else? Rocks. Roots, yeah. And what the roots need to do are to be, to be spread out, right, so the plant can grow bigger. Well, that's how our moms work in us, right? They help us grow. So, they give us what we need, we they plant good things in us, right? Love and and good words, mostly good words. Sometimes not good words. I mean, right. <laughs> but then, eventually, as you get older, you know this, right? Eventually, they have to take you out of the little pot and plant you in a bigger pot, right, Manny? And that makes your mom really nervous. Does it not, Ashley? Yeah, it does. But eventually you grow, right? And that's the important thing that moms do for us and what we celebrate with a plant. And so today, I need all your help. Every single woman, young and old, needs one of these from there, okay? And Dustin will help you reach if we need to go taller. So there are women up there, and all the women, young and old, out there need a plant like this. Did you see the? Did you guys see any pictures up there? Did you see the slideshow? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I had a lot of fun putting that together, and some of the pictures, um, when they were given to me, the person said she's not gonna like that. Thank you. But what? I did it anyway. So we celebrate all the moms that are in our presence, okay? What, pray with me, please. Thank you, God, for all you give to us, for the moms who love us and continue to help us to grow. We give you thanks, God, for all things and for these young people and their families in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you will carefully um, pass those out, that would be great. One, somebody can take Andy can take that one, if you don't mind, please. And you can make as many trips as you need to. Yes. I'm sorry. And then when you're all done, give everybody a flower. You can go upstairs with glory. Okay?
back here and we'll put a bunch of stuff. Who still needs one? Raise your hand if you still need one so the kids can find you. So Gina, keep going. Everybody in the choir have one? Okay, good. Yeah, Jen needs one over on the piano. Oliver, you will take one to Jen, okay? We gotta be getting close. Who still needs one? So, all the way in the back. Yes, they're making their way. All right. And one, there you go. I think, okay, who needs one? Kayla over there needs one. Clear across there, Kayla. See her raise her hand at you? Raise your hand again, Kayla. Stand up, but that won't help you that much. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, Kayla. Kind of. All right. So Nancy, none to take home. Several prayer concerns to share through this morning before we pray together. Uh, we continue to pray for Marie and for George and for Lloyd and for Barb, for Mike and for Patty. Um, <laughs> amazing is one word for it. Um, Peggy is your sister-in-law still. Um, Peggy's sister-in-law Valerie Roberts um, is in the process of dying and it needs our prayers this morning. Um, Lisa and Jen um, lost their Aunt Janice, who was their dad's sister earlier this week. And John Skorupski is having an ablation, finally, an ablation that he was supposed to have two weeks ago that didn't happen for his heart that he's finally going to do tomorrow. And so we'll pray for that as well. Okay, Gina. O oh God, the creator of all things, of all good and perfect gifts. For the seeds that have been planted deep inside of us, by people who love us, and they've been nurtured and watered, they've been given the proper sun and love, and allowed the roots to expand. God, for all those gifts that are given to us, we are thankful. God, we come to you this morning celebrating Mother's Day. And so, God, today we give thanks for loving, wonderful mothers who've given their children so many invaluable gifts. We give thanks for new mothers who welcomed new life into the world. And for those who are pregnant now and awaiting the birth of this new child, we give thanks, God, for those who choose for their children adoptive and foster parents. 
who model the adoptive love of God. We give thanks for aunts and godmothers and neighbors who share maternal love with so many children. We give thanks for those who remain without biological children, sharing love in the world in many ways. We pray for many mothers who've had to bear the unimaginable burden of burying a child, and those who have borne the silent grief of stillbirth or miscarriage. We pray for those who are struggling with infertility, whose desire for a child is met with frustration. Pray for the mothers of children with special needs and chronic illness, who know anxiety and exhaustion better than most. We pray for mothers who've made the difficult and loving decision to entrust a child to adoptive parents. And we pray for those mothers who have died. Who on this day celebrate and grieve their mother in her absence. God, surround us with your mercy and grace. Be with those whose names we've mentioned. Comfort the grieving. Be with those who are dying. And surround all of us with your love. As we give you thanks and praise, God. And now hear us, God, as we pray together our prayer of confession. Lord of mercy, there are so many times in our lives when we feel alone. We wonder where you are. We cry out to you in our confusion, pain, and hurt. And when you do not immediately grant the prayers of our cries, we begin to doubt that you even care or exist. Stop us from going down this path of self-destruction. Help us look around and find the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. Forgive us when we are so quick to doubt and so arrogant in our demand of your responses. Give us a spirit of patience and willingness to be ready to hear your voice. Strengthen us for the ministries of love and hope that you have placed before us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh God, and we know you are quick to forgive us and to send us forward as your children. Hear us now, God, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
exactly what she's supposed to do so so I, I'm sorry Gina I'm the one who messed up so moving ahead we have been um, hearing from the book of Acts these post-resurrection stories um, last week we heard about the stoning of Stephen and this beginning of the resurrection story that gets shared on and on today we jump to chapter 17 Saul, who was there at the stoning of Stephen, remember the end of that story? It was Saul who was there. Now Saul, who has had his encounter with God, Saul, who's the persecutor, is now Paul, the preacher. And what's happened now is initially the story was just for the Jews. They just talked to the, the small group of people. Now the gospel is being expanded to everyone. And there's a bit of controversy about this expansion of the gospel and who could hear it and who is allowed to receive it. And so we hear this, Paul is in Athens. He is preaching this amazing sermon. Hear these words. Then Paul stood up at the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in a temple built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all people life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that people would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he is not far from each one of you. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by God by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now God commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof to all of this, by raising him from the dead. I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, the witness of the resurrection is among us. We're continue to call and to proclaim it and to share the good news. So may these words and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
One of my very favorite scriptures, and I use it a lot in funerals, is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And of course, it's the time to be born stuff. But once you get past all the time to be's, which are really important, there is another section of five or six verses. And it talks about how God has appointed work for us to do. And then it says these very important words that I just read to you that Paul said. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and go down a few verses, it says, it is God who does this. The writer of Ecclesiastes had this very same understanding of God as the writer of the book of Acts. You hear what Paul says, God did this. What's the this? What did God do? What's the this that Paul's talking about? Oh, y'all should really know. What's the this? Resurrection, right? The this that Paul's talking about is resurrection. And so Paul's preaching to this diverse group of people, but what they've done, as Paul looks around, is had all these statues of gods who they worshipped, made out of gold and silver and stone. And Paul makes this interesting observation with those who were there this day. Did you hear how he started this sermon? He was really joking. He says to them, I can see that you are very religious. But maybe by saying that he got their attention, he, they didn't reject him right away. I can see you're very religious. You have, you have all these things. And, and I even found this altar that had an inscription that says, to an unknown God. But then Paul says, I'm going to tell you about that unknown God. And then Paul enters this very large sermon. It's a few verses, but it's very large. And it's preaching and speaking resurrection. He proclaims to them that the God, this unknown God that they think they know but don't know, is it contained in a building? It's not contained in a statue made of silver or gold or stone. This God that you think you know doesn't need your human hands. God can do whatever it is that God wants. God's not contained by your knowledge or the lack thereof of who God is. What God has done. is provide for us the Christ, the Messiah. And God has done the resurrection so that everyone, you and I, would seek Him. So that you and I would come to understand who God is. And then that we would reach out to God and perhaps by reaching out, perhaps, Paul says, by reaching out, you would come to understand that God is not far from us. As a matter of fact, Paul says, God's in each of us. He says those famous words, for it's in God whom we live and move and have our being. Now for us, the resurrection seems like a far off thing. We're talking about six weeks ago that we celebrated the resurrection. But in the midst of our lives, this ongoing work of resurrection needs to continue. We too have all of these gods around us. Now, I, I thought about all the gods that demand our attention because we have a lot of them, don't we? I mean, you know, we, we are just 
inundated with all the things that take our attention, right? I mean, for me, sometimes it's just a matter of where I'm going to eat. I mean, if you go down to Miller Lane, you'll know where that's at, right? You can have every kind of food you could possibly imagine, right? From Panera to IHOP. I love uh, Mindy. Me and Mindy love IHOP. And all everything you can imagine. We have these things that just grab our attention. And then, of course, there's so many other things, right? We have 24-7 news on our TVs. When I was a kid at midnight, when some of you guys were kids at midnight, what happened to TV? It went away, right? It went away. We were talking about college last night at um, Gavin's graduation party. And you know, John, when we were on first floor at Rendell at Bluffton College, there was a payphone in the middle of the hallway, yeah. right? Yeah. And no one ever answered it when it no, and there was a shower in the middle of the hallway where everybody took a shower. That's how long John and I have known each other. You should have heard us singing in the shower in those days. Or or maybe not. We were talking, we were talking about that last night, thinking, well, how, how now everything is different. There was a TV in the lobby. That's all, that's the only TV there was. I don't think it ever got turned on. Because it probably only got... It's our junior year we got cable. But yeah, we only got three channels. Yeah. Our yeah. Now think about all the, all the stuff that demands our attention. And they become God to us. Sports is a God to us. Whether we like it or not. You know, it's on TV 24-7. You can scroll through every channel. You know... And watch whatever sport you want to watch. You can watch on your TV every kind of home improvement show that there is. You can do lakefront bargain hunters. You can do, uh, well, I can't name them all, but I, I like them all. I'm always amazed when people say what their budgets are. So how much do you want to spend we watched a show the other night. It was a young couple. They were looking for a new house. And the person said, how much do you want to spend? And the wife said, oh, 499000 What? What? And they did. They did. I don't, I don't understand it. Paul said, look, these, these things you have in your life, while we think they are important, they are important. Look deep inside yourself, Paul says. Because deep inside yourself, God has come and dwelt with you and is your God. And in that God, we live and move and have our being. We should check ourselves, just maybe. Now, it's interesting at the end of this. Paul gets all done in verse 32. When they had heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, of course, but others said, we want to hear you again on that subject. And if you read on, a few became followers of Paul and believed, and the story goes on and on because of the witness of the resurrection. Lori read to us from 1 Peter. And I thought those were some important words that we should think about in sharing the good news of the resurrection. I was going to ask you to leave that for me, but I forgot. However, I'm always ready. Think about, think about this 1 Peter, these first few verses. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good, but even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be intimidated. 
Sometimes, you know, speaking resurrection will get you in trouble. Peter got in all kinds of trouble. Got thrown in jail. If you go to chapter 12, or go ahead, Peter got in all kinds of trouble. Got thrown in jail and was asleep between the guards and was all chained and an angel came and rescued him. It's a big, long story. You should, you should read the book of Acts. Paul reminds us, you and I, friends, that the presence of the resurrection the speaking of it is deep inside of us. And it may not be by the words that we say. It may just be, and it is, by how we live. Roy Miller wasn't a man of a lot of words, was he? Roy didn't have a lot to say. He, he would come in this spot and call me Preacher Jim because he thought it was funny. If you know the show Taxi, that's what he was referring to. <clears throat> and someone, someone said the other day, Randy Wentz, I believe, you said to me, he's not far off. Do you remember saying that to me? <laughs> yeah, he's shaking his head, shaking his head. He wasn't made of a lot of words. But for me, Roy practiced resurrection by the way he lived his life. And that's true for us. You and I are called to speak resurrection in all of our lives. I invite you to pray with me. God, thank you for the gift of resurrection and for the call to keep speaking it with all that we have. Oh God, live in us. Move in us. Be in our being. As we are your offspring. We give you thanks and praise God for this word given to us today. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is In All Our Living. I invite you to stand and sing.
until we meet again, friends. God be with you. Please be seated as Jim plays for us the most. <laughs> Oh, you know. 